I'd just like to pay my respects to the traditional owners of the land, both past and present, upon which we stand. And I'd also like to thank Gabby for the invitation to present at this conference today. We appreciate the opportunity to share our work with this group of experts and welcome any comment or observation on how we can improve our approach to maximise the prevention of family violence related deaths. <coughs> There are two aspects that I'm going to um, explore in this presentation. Firstly, I'd like to give an overview of domestic and family violence death reviews across the world. And secondly, an outline of the Victorian Systemic Review of Family Violence Deaths. Domestic and family violence death reviews are established in recognition that domestic or family violence related deaths form a substantial proportion of homicide incidents and are often established following a high-profile homicide or homicide-suicide event. It has also been acknowledged that examining these incidents on an individual basis meant that valuable information was missed about recurring factors associated with family violence-related deaths. The first domestic and family violence death review was established in 1991 in the state of California, and by 2004, 71 county-level reviews were operating across the USA. Reviews have also been established in many other developed countries, including Canada, New Zealand, and most recently, Australia and the United Kingdom. An examination of death reviews across the world has shown that they share a number of common features. Most importantly, this includes the common aim to reduce fatal and non-fatal forms of domestic and family violence, and a shared philosophy to avoid blame while seeking opportunities for system improvements. In addition, the core activity of most of these reviews is to retrospectively examine systemic and human factors across incidents. As previously mentioned, there is great advantage in considering these deaths as a collective group, the reasons of which include the compilation of demographic and descriptive data on family violence related deaths, the ability to map the history of system contact and possible points of intervention, identification of environment, environmental and human risk factors, examination of gaps in policy and service delivery, and identification of opportunities and strategies for system and legislative reform. While there are a number of similarities, reviews have all, also have a number of differences, particularly with respect to governance and outputs. The governance and structure of family and domestic violence death reviews range from small-scale county-level review teams compiling descriptive data to state or provincial level multidisciplinary review boards with coronial or ministerial oversight. The majority of death reviews in the USA function as advisory boards comprising a range of professionals from the front line of the family violence sector administered by an interested lead agency, usually from a government department. With respect to outputs, these vary from annual reports of aggregated data to in-depth reviews of incident and system contacts culminating in recommendations to government and non-government agencies. Among the reported achievements of death reviews include changes in legislation, policy, programs and training, prioritisation of family violence sector funds, improvement of public understanding of family violence and implementation of formal risk assessment practices. Despite these endorsements and achievements, no independent evaluation has been conducted on established death reviews to measure their effectiveness in improving service responses to family violence or impact on the reduction of family violence related deaths. This may be due to the difficulty faced by reviews that have only recently been established or that they operate on a small scale. In such cases, population level reporting may require more time for data collection in order to make trend analysis of review impacts possible. It should be noted, however, that the New Zealand Family Violence Death Committee appears to be the only death review to acknowledge the need for an independent program evaluation with its lead agency, the Ministry of Health, committed to conducting an evaluation of the review three years post-commencement. I'm now going to provide a detailed overview of the Victorian Systemic Review of Family Violence Deaths, including its rationale for establishment, its governance, scope, and summary of key findings to date. <coughs> In Victoria, from early 2000, the issue of family violence became a focus for reform. A number of significant shifts occurred in the way family violence was conceptualised in government, the family violence sector and the wider community. 
Some of the most notable milestones in this reform process are shown on the slide. This began with establishment of the statewide steering committee to reduce family violence in 2002. The committee later recommended integrating services through a multi-agency system reform in order to provide a more cohesive approach to family violence in Victoria. In 2006, the Victorian Law Reform Commission re released its Review of Family Violence Laws Report, which examined the justice system's response to family violence. This report noted that family violence was often treated as a private issue and that at times the response of the justice system was inadequate and inconsistent. In March 2006, the Review of Family Violence Laws Report was released and proposed that a new act be introduced dealing exclusively with family violence. Furthermore, the report identified that a clear and definitive statement was needed to explain the act's objectives and provide a basis for attitudinal change amongst police, courts and the wider community. Finally, in 2008, based on the recommendations made by the Commission, the Family Violence Protection Act 2008 was introduced. The Act extended the definition of family violence to behaviour that is physically or sexually abusive, emotionally or psychologically abusive, threatening or coercive, or in other ways controls or dominates an individual and causes them to fear for their safety or well-being or that of another person. Amid the increased focus on the response to family violence, in late 2008, the former Attorney General announced the Systemic Review of Family Violence Death, which became operational in May 2009. At the time, the review was the first of its kind in Australia and provided a unique opportunity to closely examine these deaths as a related group. With respect to governance, consideration was given to three main alternatives. These included Establishing an independent, multidisciplinary ministerial advisory committee supported by a departmental inquiry and review unit that was similar to the Victorian Child Death Review Committee. <coughs> Secondly, conducting an on-paper internal review led by a departmental officer or an academic institution. Or thirdly, a systemic review of family violence, family violence death position within the coronial jurisdiction. It was determined that, re that the review be positioned within the Coroner's Court of Victoria and specifically within the newly established Coroner's Prevention Unit. Among the reasons that underpinned this decision were that family violence related deaths fall within the ambit of compulsory reportable deaths under the Coroner's Act and coroners are required to find the circumstances surrounding a death in their finding. Coroners hold expertise in conducting investigations into reportable deaths and are familiar with the range of investigative procedures available to them, such as forensic medicine and scientific experts. Coronial investigations can be conducted by an inquest, which can lead to information becoming publicly available. Coroners also have a wide range of existing powers to support the investigative process, including powers of entry, inspection, and production of documents and compulsion of witnesses. And most importantly, the independence of the coroner to ensure an open and transparent review. The review considers family violence deaths investigated by, the, by Victorian coroners to inform future interventions and assist in protecting children and adults from violence. The review is founded on the premise that family violence related deaths are preventable and that improving systemic responses to this issue is a fundamental step towards achieving this goal. The review has five main objectives which are to examine the context in which family violence deaths occur, to identify risk and contributory factors associated with family violence, to identify trends or patterns in family violence related deaths, to consider current systemic responses to family violence, and to provide an evidence base for coroners to support the formulation of prevention recommendations aimed at reducing non-fatal and fatal forms of family violence. The role and responsibilities of the coroner and operation of the court are primarily governed by the Coroner's Act. The Act does not make specific reference to the review, however the requirement to investigate reportable deaths is covered within the, within the legislation. An important provision contained in the Act provides coroners with the power to comment on any matter connected with the death, including public health or safety, in order to prevent future preventable deaths from occurring in the same or similar circumstances. Through the provisions outlined in the Act, coroners also have the power to make recommendations to any minister, 
public statutory authority or entity on any matter connected with the death that the coroner has investigated, including recommendations about public health and safety and the administration of justice. Importantly, the Act compels any statutory authority or entity that is the subject of a recommendation from the coroner to respond in writing within three months to specify what action has, is or will be taken. It is also a provision of the Act that the organisation's response, as well as the coroner's finding, be published on the internet. This diagram illustrates the structure of the review team. As I've already mentioned, the review is led by the Victorian State Coroner, and members of the review team sit within the coroner's prevention unit. The CPU was established in October 2008 with the primary aim of strengthening the prevention role of coroners. The CPU is comprised of four teams, the Intentional Death Investigation Team, Unintentional Death Investigation Team, Health and Medical Investigation Team, and Research and Policy Team. The CPU provides assistance to coroners at any stage of the investigation, However, family violence deaths are involved from the time that the death is reported. The central tasks associated with the review team are completed within the intentional death investigation <coughs> team. And this team composition includes the CPU manager, the intentional death investigation team leader, a case investigator dedicated to family violence, and a research assistant. In addition, the expertise of other members of the CPU are drawn on to inform particular aspects. This includes a mental health case investigator and a case investigator with specialisation in suicide. The other party central to the review is Victoria Police, specifically the Police Coronial Support Unit, the Violence Against Women and Children Strategy Group and the Homicide Squad. The Police Coronial Support Unit is situated within the coroner's court and provides assistance and support to coroners. In connection to the investigation of family violence deaths, the Police Coroner Support Unit assists in obtaining further information or statements as directed by the coroner and works closely with the family violence case investigator in relation to pertinent matters that must be explored at inquest. The CPU also liaises with members of Victoria Police Violence Against Women and Children's Strategy Group and the Homicide Squad. This liaison relates to the progress of an investigation whether a matter meets the inclusion criteria for the review, as well as collecting further statements where required. And senior members of both of these groups are also members of our reference group. The reference group provides a specialist consultative body to both the state coroner and the coroner's prevention unit on systemic issues and opportunities within the family violence service system. This group is comprised of 38 member organisations from both government and non-government sectors, including Family Violence and Sexual Assault Peak Bodies and Service Providers, Victoria Police and Government Departments such as the Department of Human Services, Department of Justice and the Department of Planning and Community Development. The reference group is chaired by the State Coroner and convened two to three times per year. Outside of these times, the review team members consult with individual members of the reference group on particular issues in their area of expertise. For a death to be considered relevant to the review, it must meet the following criteria. That either the deceased and the homicide offender had an intimate or familial relationship, or the death occurred in the context of family violence. The definition of family violence we've adopted is, is that which is defined in the Family Violence Protection Act, which recognises that this behaviour extends beyond physical and sexual violence and may involve emotional, psychological or economic abuse. In addition, we apply the definition of the Victorian Indigenous Family Violence Task Force, that being an issue focused around a wide range of physical, emotional, sexual, social, spiritual, cultural, psychological and economic abuses that occur in families, kinship networks and communities. It extends to one-on-one -on -one fighting, abuse of Indigenous community workers, as well as self-harm, injury and suicide. To underpin the work of the review, a number of research tools and processes have been developed. This includes the prospective and retrospective surveillance of family violence related deaths reported to the court and identification of scientific and grey literature. This information is housed in purpose-built searchable databases. The inclusion of deaths in the review and the data collection is guided by two key operational documents. 
namely a homicide categorization document and an investigative framework. The primary focus of the review is to assist the coroner with the investigation of family violence deaths. This comprises the generation of a case report for the coroner, which is the major output of the review. As already mentioned, sector engagement and consultation is undertaken at two levels, with the reference group meetings and one-on-one -on -one consultations with reference group members on specific issues of interest. Stakeholder consultation is also undertaken with other experts outside the reference group, particularly other Australian and international experts in family violence reforms. Staff of the review also undertake operational and community education activities, such as preparation of departmental documents, briefings and updates to government committees, and material for presentations. One of the review's major achievements in the, is the construction of the homicide register. The register captures all the variables listed in the university framework, which from the extensive consultation with the reference group and broader family violence sector was endorsed in November 2010. The investigative framework is a comprehensive data dictionary that describes a range of variables and relevance to the review and includes information on the deceased and demographic information, sorry, deceased and offender demographic information, victim and offender risk and vulnerability indicators, record of family violence, service contact and responses, and also the justice response. The investigative framework will be applied to all family violence related deaths identified from 2009 onwards. <coughs> Another achievement of the review to date is that 14 case review reports, which relate to 22 deaths, have been completed for coroners. Seven of these incidents are currently at or listed for inquest, some of which are shown in the slide. Focused areas for the inquest include the identification and response to family violence in healthcare settings, community awareness of family violence and the provision of assistance to victims, mandatory reporting of suspected child abuse, and the roles and actions of services with statutory involvement in relation to child wellbeing. Although the case reviews prepared for the coroner are confidential, the information they contain is used to inform coroner's findings and recommendations, which are the primary mechanism through which the review has influence. The other major achievement of the review that I'd like to mention was the compilation of the preliminary descriptive statistical overview of family violence related homicides in Victoria. Before I present this information, it should be noted that this summary includes open criminal and coronial investigations and is therefore subject to change. We intend to meet with our Victoria Police colleagues in the near future to refine this data further. The other caveat that I'll put on this data is that when whether a death is a family violence related homicide for the purposes of the review, the definition of homicide used is different to the legal definition of homicide. Homicide in our instance includes all circumstances where an individual's actions resulted in the death of another person. This was necessary because we encountered a number of situations in which offenders were found not guilty of homicide by law, but were instrumental in the death of another person. This occurred, for example, where the offender was found not guilty by reason of mental impairment. The figure on the slide that shows the annual frequency of determined and suspected homicide deaths during the period 2000 to 2010. A total of 705 deaths were identified, representing an average of 64 deaths per year. This ranged from a low of 53 deaths in 2007 to the highest recorded of 74 deaths in 2003. In 2010, 62 deaths were identified. This figure shows the annual frequency of homicide deaths by relevance to the review during the same period. On average, 43.8% of deaths involved an intimate or familiar relationship between the relevant parties or the death occurred in a family violence context. To date, the proportion of homicides identified in 2010 that involved an intimate and or familiar relationship is 38.7%. This figure shows the annual frequency of the relationship between the offender and the deceased for all homicides identified as relevant to the review. The highest proportion of family violence death occurred amongst intimate partners, comprising on average 55.7% of family violence deaths during the reported period. 
The proportion of intimate partner homicides ranged from a low of 37.8% in 2002 to the highest proportion of 73.1% in 2006. In addition, 25% of deaths relevant to the review involved parents and children, including adult children killing a parent. The review team has experienced a number of challenges, some of which we've been able to overcome by developing definitions and databases, others we may never, never be able to overcome, such as the delays between the incident and completion of the coroner's investigation and recommendations, particularly where criminal proceedings are pending. Other domestic and family violence death reviews recently established in other states and territories have formed the National Domestic and Family Violence Death Review Network. <clears throat> the first network teleconference was held in March 2011 and the first face-to-face -face meeting of the network members took place in Sydney earlier this month. An important objective of the network is to share information and coordinate data collection where possible. The network provides a forum to discuss issues and challenges encountered with respective states and to work collaboratively to overcome these hurdles. <coughs> The development of the, the network is aligned to strategy 5.2 of the National Plan to reduce violence against women and their children, which emphasises the state's responsibility to promote continuous improvement through sharing outcomes of reviews into deaths and homicides related to domestic violence. The review seems to be at a point where we have a level of agreement and understanding of how we define and examine the depth of interest to the review. <coughs> what remains to be seen is how the work undertaken to date translates, translates into current findings and more importantly recommendations and how these recommendations will impact sector improvements and reductions in family violence related deaths. Victoria is unique to the world in that recommendations must be responded to so we will no doubt have some further experiences to share in the future. On the agenda for 2011 is to apply the investigative framework to 2009 deaths, completion of a publicly available document on the Victorian Review Model, and progression of case, case reports for deaths that occurred in 2009 and 2010. We acknowledge that the review is still in its infancy and there are many things that we can develop further, and we welcome any comment or feedback on our operation. Thank you again for the opportunity to present today. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have either now or at the time.